production environment in OC per database. What kind of what kind of uh, yeah, uh, document store, key value? Ah, MongoDB, okay. And you use uh, related with Joomla or uh, an application? Which was uh, um, the main reason for, for you to choose MongoDB? So maybe you can wait people. Do you use PHP or do you? Okay, so maybe it's time to start. Start. Okay. So if you are here, maybe you are interested in um, in this dilemma, <coughs> and if you want to choose uh, one of these uh, uh, two different uh, um, approach to data storage. So this is some. Uh, Information about me. Uh, if in the Joomla world my alias is Alto, maybe some of you know already me. <coughs> I'm from Italy, mm. and my current hobby is, as you can see, I run away from the dentist. <laughs> okay, <coughs> I will try to follow uh, this approach because uh, it's difficult to have a, a precise, a, 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 a correct answer to these questions. So I will try to analyze the what is what is the question, not what, what is the answer. So um, a, quest, a, a first question that uh, may arise is uh, why we need to to have this choice. Well, well simple question. Uh, simple answer is because of big data, as uh, uh, the friend uh, has uh, just talked uh, some seconds before. <clears throat> But big data is uh, uh, an odd term. It is a term that uh, has many, many meanings. <clears throat> so another question that may arise is, uh, what is big data? Uh, this is my answer. Oh, you, you remember stuff. And this is the answer that you can find uh, on Wikipedia. So it's a, a large data set that is complex to process with the traditional application. <clears throat> but what is large? How much is big data? Just to, uh, uh, to make an example, if we, in, the, in this USB key I can store 16 gigabytes, if I have to manage 100 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes for me is big data. Because I can't manage, I can't store in one only uh, tool stuff. So, so this is an example, uh, a categorization of what kind of uh, measure we have, and uh, just a, a data that can uh, is more significant is that uh, uh, the large uh, hadron collider in Geneva produce in one second one petabyte of data and one petabyte is something that 10 at 15 in one second so the question um, you I want you to pay attention in, in the concept what is big data for you not what is big data in general we are not talking about Bronto byte but we are talking about in your relation what is big uh, another question is where, from where the data came from? Uh, this is another uh, popular term nowadays from Internet of, of Everything. <clears throat> With the ETV6 protocol, you can address every part of the world. So, this can give you an, an idea how much data can be produced. <clears throat> Uh, just another question. When did it, when, when did it happen? Uh, 
if you look at this graph, yeah, yeah, yeah. we see that data grow at the exponential rise. So I think we we are at the start of this big phenomenon, <clears throat> and we have we, we we need to be ready to manage this. <clears throat> Do you know your data? Even if this is maybe be a silly question, maybe it's very important. Pay attention. You have to know roughly your data because it's important. <clears throat> Statistics say that 80% of the world data is not structured. So, in, uh, in, in your data, what kind of... Uh, where are you? This is a, an important factor to, to let you decide which kind of approach you need to follow. And uh, another dimension <coughs> to, take a, to, take a, to take attention is a, a volume of data. So what kind of data and in, in which volume you, you, you have to manage? <coughs> Because uh, we are talking about uh, something that is very big, we need to try to discover some properties to take advantage of this and to be able to manage. Uh, commonly, if you read something in the, in the lecture, <coughs> in the uh, paper, scientific paper about this matter, you see a lot of uh, publications that put uh, uh, talk about the four U. Um, most of them are, are, are very obvious. You know? uh, we are talking about the volume of data, the speed of data, the variety of data, structure and structure. And <coughs> we, we uh, need to pay attention at the veracity of data. Because in a, in a, in a big, uh, in an ocean, ocean of, of data, uh, some, some data could be wrong. You know, in information technology, if you send a message from a, a, a source to a destination, that could be some error, and, that, that, and, and you have to take account of this. Um, I, I want to add another V, that is value. How, how much value that these, these data have to you? Uh, I'll try to explain a little bit better. <coughs> How much is valuable your data? How much is important your data for your business? How much money is your data? In simple terms. <coughs> if you are developing uh, some application for some customer, or one of the requirements that nowadays is very common that people ask to you is about availability and they came uh, with the name the 59. Uh, as you can see, if you want to achieve the 59s, this means that you in one year you have only five mi five minutes of them time. So where are you in this table? What, what are your requirements? So, before we, we lose, I want to give you a map to the whole panorama of the database. Uh, we, in Joomla, use MySQL, so I'm here, here. but I, as you can see, there are a lot of uh, bus stop, uh, uh, under, uh, underground stop. There are a lot of, uh, of kind of databases to manage different things. Oh, okay. So, what exactly is NoSQL? Uh, it's difficult to, to talk about something that is defined, but from which is not. So we, we can try to, <coughs> to extrapolate some common concept. Some people refer about NoSQL, some 
for it about not only SQL and some people refer about not yet SQL but uh, if you look at uh, maybe I think it's one of the official uh, sites of this movement they uh, enlighten for four points one important point obviously is that all these kind of databases are open source so you can freely download, test and improve. Uh, another important characteristic is that they are designed to run on cluster, on distributed machine. And they are horizontally scalable, we will see later. And uh, uh, another important feature or characteristic, sorry. <coughs> Is they they not they, they are not relational. Uh, we will see briefly. So this is a, a panorama uh, to try to understand uh, what we are talking about. Uh, in this graph, as you can see, there are in the x-axis the complexity. Uh, this blue ellipse is uh, the rela relational database spaces. As you can see, the, the, data, the database that can handle most complex query, strangely, but is the graph database. And the, 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 the data store that are able to manage a big, big size of data is the key value store. So, uh, all of you, I think, uh, are uh, know what relational means. Normalization, maybe schema, algebra of sets, relation, foreign key, and some some uh, some other things like this. When you have to model your data and you want to uh, uh, to follow the relational approach, uh, what you do is simple. Uh, try and split data across table in different uh, tables. If you look at this example, is uh, uh, maybe an order. You can see that in the relational world, you you use this kind of uh, beta model. But uh, this uh, could uh, <coughs> may arise some problem because in uh, programming language. You use usually different structure, more complex structure than table, lines of table, records. You use maybe something like a list, something like an array, and something like this. <coughs> so when you when you need to store data to a, a database, you have to do something like a map this data from your structure in memory in language side to, to map in the in the in the table. This is a common problem that go under the name of impedance mismatch. This is one reason for the rise of, uh, maybe you can know, the object relational mapper framework. Maybe some, some of you use doctrine. No? So it's an, an helper to uh, speed the development. SQL use another approach, another data model. They claim to be schemaless. As you know, in the relational world, you have a schema. Every table has a schema and is quite rigid. Uh, another important aspect to, <coughs> to take in account is that they use the denormalization. Usually, <coughs> in the relational databases, you use the normalization. You try to normalize at uh, at the uh, 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 nth power. In the NoSQL mo in, in NoSQL data models, you 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 you, you make the opposite. You tend to aggregate data, and uh, this aggregate is the single unit that you use 
to move data back and forth to the database. This is a, could be an advantage because you, you have less I.O. Because you need to one operation to store the data. Think at the order of the example before. If you need to store each, each record in each table, you have to do a lot of I.O. operations. <coughs> Using an aggregate, you don't. You have to use only one I.O. operation. So the performance are drastically reduced. So let's go and see what the, these data models are. <coughs> the most simple uh, data model is the key value store. You have a key, you have a value, that's all. You have only three functions to, to assess to uh, manipulate data. You have a get function, a set, and a delete. <coughs> Uh, this kind of data store don't don't don't, uh, don't don't want to know what you you are to put in the value. You you can put every, everything you want: a blob of data, a video, a, um, a picture, a, a text, a numbers, whatever you want. Obviously, I made mean, it in, in a simple way, but the things are not so simple. Both key and value could be a little bit complex. <coughs> uh, another, another step is the document data store. The document data store is a little bit more transparent than key value store and uh, is based uh, upon the JSON that all of you know better than me. So, in this example, <coughs> um, you will see how you can model something in the relational world. Maybe this is some book, album, and some other product. And this is, is the way where, <coughs> where in document data store are mapped this data. As you can see, Instead to use one, two, three, four, five tables, you use only one aggregate to store the data. And each piece of this data is one element of this JSON object. This is a little bit more complex, uh, but is the same concept behind. Uh, is Sparse semi structured sorted maps. It seems something that is very ugly, uh, but it is. The, uh, in my opinion, the most important thing that the, the column that has to uh, change the picture is the way in which uh, the, these data are stored. Uh, if you take an example of, of, of a, a table like this, you will see that we store in memory, uh, sorry, in storage data per row. In column family, you store data for, per column. And this uh, gives you some increase of performance when, when you have to, to assess data. Um. <coughs> uh, this kind of model is quite different from the model I have told you before. Because it is based on the, the graph theory and uh, is very able to manage relationship. So you don't use the approach of the aggregation. Instead, even more than relational database, you use the decomposition of entities. Uh, just an example, when you see uh, in, in a commerce application, when you recommend products uh, based upon your friends what you are buying and something like this, there are, when there are the need to manage complex relationships, this database could be a very w good choice. Just to make you another simple example, think at a tree, at a tree a hierarchy structure. 
and think uh, uh, how much is complex to manage this kind of data with the relational database. I give you an example, and maybe some of you know what I mean. The nested set table. When we need to manage category, nested category, in relational world, it's not so easy to manage. And we have a lot of bad performance. And with the graph that I saw, maybe we can gain something. How many of you have, have heard about map reduce job? No one? Okay. Uh, what is the problem? If you use uh, an aggregation data model, like the example before, you have, you have chosen maybe to use an order aggregation. aggregation. <coughs> so you, uh, you have an order and the, 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 uh, each single product in the same aggregate. Now imagine <coughs> that you need to extrapolate from the orders, uh, from the orders what is the much uh, the top selling the, the top selling product? Because we have used the the order aggregate, you need to do something like scan all the all the all the aggregates to extract the, uh, the 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 product item and to and to count uh, uh, what is the max selling. Depending on the dimension, the volume of your data, this could be a very, uh, very hard task, a very long task. So the MapReduce job help you in, the, in this way when you uh, need to uh, access your data in a different way what, that you have modeled. And uh, it is quite simple because separate task and they have the, 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 the characteristic that each task could, could, can run in parallel. I, I'll try to explain better with an example. So, divide a temperate. Imagine <coughs> that you have to count uh, how many times uh, a, a, a word is present in a text. So you can split this job into sub 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 task. The first one, you simply count in each chunks of data how many time is present. And you can note that you can divide this task on a different machine. So you can achieve a, a good grade of parallelism. <coughs> and the same thing. You can do with the reduce job, so you can can have some uh, par parallelization of your elaboration. To give you an, uh, maybe an example, realistic. How many of you remember City at Home project? Yeah? In the City at Home project, uh, they receive a lot of data, big data, and they split across any people that sign in the decide to elaborate some data and then retrieve data and produce results. This is similar concept that is behind. Uh, so there is no perfect solution. There is no one perfect solution. When you have to choose your data model, you have to think uh, in which way you, you access your data? What kind of application you are, you are making? Uh, a read intensive application or a write intensive application? Something like Mixed. You need to use complex query or not? Because in the example before with the MapReduce, if you are using a relational database, you just have to make a group by to achieve that, that result. So, things, you have a choice. You, have, uh, you can do from uh, normalized, full normalized, means uh, graph data store, or full denormalized, mean key value store. And 
this is depend on what kind of application you have to manage. What, uh, sorry, what kind of data do you have and in, in what way you have to manage? <clears throat> How do you scale? Uh, like the example before, if you have to store te te uh, 100 gigabytes, you, you can't in one simple... So you have two ways to do this. You can scale vertical, vertically, buying a big box, a big RAM, a big CPU, a big disk, or, or you can scale in horizontal way. Add more boxes. NoSQL data store are designed with this approach in mind. They are able to run in a cluster network. And this is an important factor because these choices can give you some problem if you don't know exactly what you are doing. And this is uh, the reason, maybe. My, my most favorite is the item number three, is bandwidth is infinite. Obviously it's true, no? I think not. So you have to be aware when you make these choices. You have, you have to know what you are doing. So to manage a large volume of data, there are some techniques. One of these is sharding. What is mean? It's quite simple. If you think at an, an encyclopedia, maybe, there are some volumes that go from, by letters, alphabetical order. So you can split your data in different machines using the distributed approach. You, if you choose this technique to uh, handling a large volume of data, you pay, you, you need to pay um, big attention of the shard key. In this silly example, I, I, I've used a simple alphabetical order. But maybe you can use another kind of concept. If uh, we refer uh, always to the order example, maybe I can store in one shard only the orders, and in one other, only the customer, and in one other, only the product. So, this is a very uh, important choice that you have to make. Another consideration to do, to make, uh, is, again, the way you access your data. Because you, you, if you have to access your data that uh, are sto is stored in different shards, maybe the, the, the task could be a little bit more complex. So you have to, 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 to make the shard key choices with many attention at what is your application needs. Uh, obviously, another point of attention is the load of these shards. Obviously, we don't want one, one empty shards and one completely fully. It's not useful. Oh, and this is <laughs> what cr uh, cr uh, creates a lot of problems to manage. Replication. To achieve the 5.9, one of the common techniques that is used it is to replicate data. In, in, in the case that one node goes down, you have a lot of replica and you, you can be always available. Uh, <clears throat> there are two ways to, to do replication. Most common is the master slave. When one node can accept the right operation and the, the replica node can accept only the read operation. Is the charge of the the master node to replicate data 
across all the, the, the three. Another way, uh, another aspect to be to pay attention is the way in, in which the data is replicated to the to the node. It is made in a synchronous way or in a synchronous way. We will see later what, what, what are the pros and, and the cons to these choices. Okay, now go to the problem. This is a, a common problem that is present in relational world and in NoSQL world at the same, at the same degree. If you have two people that want to access the same data at the same time, and if you let that things happen like in this picture, you have some problem because in this case, this right disappear. What is the solution that relational database use? Transaction. Transaction uh, has four common properties. Atomicity. Uh, I made an example. Uh, if you want to transfer found from uh, A to B, nobody wants that if something goes wrong here, the, the transaction stop at uh, item 4, you don't want that the operation was committed. You want the operation was not back because the, the transfer found is not complete. This is one of the important property of, S, of the transaction. Another important property is the consi consistency. Uh, as you may know, consist con consistency have a lot of flavor. Very, very, a lot of flavor. I made you the simple one. Consider, before the transaction starts, that the, the sum for A and B account is 100. After the, the, trans, the, trans, uh, the transaction commits, th that value doesn't change. This is a, a, an example, but I have uh, some others. Uh, another import, important uh, properties is isolation. You don't want that two transactions runs concurrently at the same time because we we can uh, we can generate right conflict like the example before ah, this is a, a quite uh, common I, if your system responds to you that the operation is completed even after database failure your data is still there But NoSQL database don't use ACID. They claim to be base. What does this mean? Uh, basically available, soft state, and eventual consistent. Simple, seems something a little bit strange. I make you an example. How many of you have uh, experienced this kind of, uh, of thing? No one? Why? Why this happen? Uh, one of the reasons is that you, uh, Facebook, obviously, because it, it, it has to manage a lot of data, use replication. Depending on the choices of if the replication goes synchrono synchronously or asynchronously, you, you can make a delay. So if people are connected at different nodes, this is, is common behavior. And in this case, nobody scares. If you are if you are um, broken the consistency property, nobody's care because you have just to wait one minute and the data 
became again consistent. Ah. How many of you heard about the cap theorem? <laughs> How many of you understand what the cap theorem means? Ah. I'll try to with some example to, to explain. Essentially, it's not so complicated. It's not so complex. Because, um, first of all, we, we need to, mm, to specify what we, we mean with for partition tolerance. A partition, toler uh, partition tolerance is a, a system is able to work even on a nature failure. So, in this uh, uh, enunciation of this theory, we, we, are, we are in the case that we have a, a network partition. I made you an example so you can understand better. This is a common problem. Imagine that two people, Maria and Nick, want to book the same flight and this flight is full, and there is only one seat free. Imagine Maria is uh, from the United States, so it connects to a data center based on the US, and Nick is in Europe, so it, it connects from <coughs> another data center. If the two data centers cannot communicate together, we have a network partition. Uh, some of you may know this problem like a split brain, split brain problem. So, who will take the next, the next flight? What the cap theory tells you is that you have a choice. You can choose consistency, which means, okay, we have detected that we have a network partition, so please, sorry, reservation system is not available at the moment. Try again later. Or, if you want to be available, you can hallow. Both people do the reservation. One of them takes the next flight. No problem. So, this is, there is a technical reason behind, but this is a business choice. But, I'll give you another example. This is my field because I work for bank software. Take at this example. Uh, usually, in the night hour, uh, banks are offline because they work some complex job uh, and some think of this. But they allow you. So you you. You can see that is a network partition in this case, because the ATM cannot communicate with the, the central bank. So what is the, the business choice here? Again, I I avail availability. But banks don't lose money. So they have policies, they have some rule to take the operation registered on the ATM and with some elaboration make the data already consistent. And obviously, if you go uh, under zero, they apply you a fee. Okay, but if we don't have network partition, what the cap theory tells you? Uh, you? You find this like the name PASELC. Um, I want you to uh, focus your attention on, on the concept of availability. In your opinion, if one operation to complete takes five minutes, you can consider this time like availability, available, your application is available, or not. So, if you change availability with latency, which is another degree of availability, you can apply the same 
as before. So the cat theorem is valid the same. The choices in this case is from consistency and latency. If you don't want that an operation take five minutes, you, is like like the example before. You allow double up overbooking. So, this is like a chess game. Every move you, have, you, you need to make, you have to pay very, very attention at what you are doing, because each choice has pros and cons. So, how, I hope you use the, the good move and win the game. But it's not so easy. Uh, just a summary. Um, yeah, could be. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, do you have some questions? No questions? Okay, I, I have some. Please. Yeah. Is that any relevant because in this you can store whatever you want? So. Yeah. So is it close to. Uh, the, yes. No, imagine that uh, in a relational database, like uh, for example PostGre, uh, they they have a, a, a file a, a field type type of JSON. So the the the, the market is evolving because the, the 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 need to manage big data let people to to try to to make a clever solution to the problem. Uh, so, if, if, uh, uh, <coughs> considering that we have some quite minutes, uh, I want to, to share my, my common vision <coughs> that maybe you have heard about the term polyglot persistence. What, can, what, what, what I want to, to say to you? In an application, uh, or in Joomla, you can see that we have PHP code, JavaScript code, HTML code, CSS code. In the same way, using uh, encapsulation or information hiding, we can use different data stores for different needs in the same application. So I think this could be the future. Because no, use the right tool for the right job. This is the next future, I think. Okay, questions? If you have questions, uh, in this case, I finished.